Hi everyone, 110 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins. Want to give you a two o'clock update on what we're looking at. So 85 mile per hour winds, it continues to strengthen. This thing was at 45 mile per hour winds for about a day and a half going back to yesterday, but last night started intensifying as expected. And this should actually go up to about 130 by the time we get towards Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday night. Uh, so it's going to be a strong one. Uh, it's passing by the Caymans now. Lots of convection boiling up near the center. Winds are picking up. Obviously, pressures are lowering. So this is a strengthening hurricane. In fact, it's called rapid intensification. We expect more than 30 knots of increase in wind speed in a 24 hour period, and that technically qualifies for that. Now, let's talk where it's going. The two o'clock update from the Hurricane Center does not update the track. The 11 o'clock AM one did. They're going Wednesday morning at 140 mile per hour winds. This is late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, southwest of Marco, right? Category four hurricane. Now notice as it moves to the north, it actually weakens a little bit. That's great news. There's wind shear coming in from the south and the west. There's dry air that's gonna get kind of pulled back in it as well. So that'll tend to cut down on the winds a little bit. But when it's down here, it's throwing water up against the Florida coast. That's the storm surge issue, and that will likely be our worst issue that we'll see out of this particular storm. We're going to get very heavy rain. This is Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, then Friday morning. It slows down. These are 12 hour increments, but you can see how these are stuck together. That's 24 hours right there. It just happens to slow down right when it gets to us because it's running into a high pressure to the north. So you can see the big track will eventually take it further off to the north, but it gets blocked up here. So as it's coming, it says, well, well I was going to have to hang out here for a little bit and then I can get going. That will weaken it a little bit, but that will add to our rainfall totals and that will add to our storm surge. So it's not like we're just getting brushed by this thing. We're getting brushed by it, maybe even direct hit with it, and it's going to take its time coming through. Watches and warnings, all watches for our area at this time. The purple or pink you see here, hurricane watch. The yellow for inland locations, tropical storm watch. Hurricane watches means you could get 74 mile per hour winds or higher within the next 48 hours. Tropical storm means you could get 39 to about 73, right? Highest winds obviously will be right here along the coast. The further inland you go, the less wind we will see. We'll see tornadoes. This whole, the whole state essentially, especially along the coast, will have a tornado threat as this moves to the north. Now, here's the storm surge. We have a storm surge watch from Anclote basically all the way down. Unfortunately, the Hurricane Center's forecast is five to 10 foot for Pinellas and Hillsboro. That's including Tampa Bay. That is the worst, that's the highest forecast that we have right now. That's because the winds would blow the water into the bay and there's just nowhere for it to go. It's stuck. So the northern parts of the bay will likely see the most flooding. Oldsmar, Safety Harbor is pretty high, but there's gonna be some areas there, but certainly Oldsmar all the way down towards the Rocky Point area. And, and literally guys, West Shore, all the way down Apollo Beach, those areas could see a lot of storm surge flooding. We are evacuating already. They're starting that. They're going to go A and B and then even C in some cases. So those levels will go up. Now down here, the further south you go, less storm surge, but there will still be some very high storm surge. People are going to think the center is going past them. Oh, they don't got to worry about it, but the water's coming up anyways. Think Sarasota, think especially Venice and point southward. Sarasota is going to get some pretty good storm out of this. The models look at this turn and then coming back. That turn is in response to a high pressure here that it gets stuck underneath. So we were hoped that it would stay further offshore. Even if it does this, it's gonna blow water our way. If it does this, we'll get less wind. We'll get a little less water. If it does this, we're gonna get more of everything. Now, if it does this into Manatee and Sarasota County, Tampa Bay is not gonna have that surge flood. We just don't know at this time exactly where it's going to make landfall. That's what we're trying to figure out gradually as the model data comes in and as we watch the satellite and the radar. Uh, but wherever that goes in, if it goes in Tarpon Springs, it's putting water right up in the bay. If it goes in Manatee County, it's putting water into Sarasota County, but pulling water out of Tampa Bay. Think Charlie. Remember Charlie made that turn? The storm surge, the worst storm surge was right there where it went on shore. This one, because it looks like it wants to go straight, basically pushes water all up and down the coast. And then when it gets to the closest point, which looks like Tampa, it'll push it in there more. The GFS ensembles showing a pretty good agreement right here in the middle 
that white line is basically the consensus where it kind of averages it and you can see it does make this little turn. See it gets wobbly in there? That is it slowing down. The European, which has been turning into southwest Florida for a couple days now, is now very similar to the GFS, just taking this right up our coast. Last time we saw any kind of surge like this, any kind of direct hit with a hurricane like this, was 1921. It's over 100 years ago. It was the Tarpon Springs hurricane. Uh, we got hit again in 46. It was a direct hit. It wasn't as strong. Uh, this is the timing now. So we're going most likely arrival would be around Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. in the Tampa Bay area. That's actually a little bit before sunrise. I'd say 5, 6 in the morning. They were saying Pinellas County could see it as early as about 3 in the morning. So before sunrise on Wednesday morning, tropical storm force winds will start to move into the air and they'll just increase. Our chances for seeing tropical storm force winds, again, 40 to about 73, are up in the 80s and that, that likely will go a little bit higher. Uh, did you notice though, by the way, let me show you this, the best chances are right along the immediate coast, right? So you see where the purple is? That's the best chance for seeing it. You get a little less, a little less, a little less, obviously, when you work your way inland. So let's finish this up with the threats and the timing. So the wind obviously will pick up before sunrise on Wednesday morning, but really get steady throughout the day. I would imagine the bridge is closed sometime mid-morning on Wednesday. Skyway could be sooner than that. Howard Franklin Bridge, Courtney Campbell, Gandy, they shut all those down around 40 miles per hour. They tend to let it go a little bit higher sometimes, but you can't plan on that. So mid-morning on Wednesday, bridge is likely to go down. Be shut down, not go down. Let me clear myself up here. Uh, the main threats that we think here will be Wednesday afternoon through Thursday. So schools are closed now in Hillsborough through Thursday. There's not going to be school on Friday if this track holds and this timing holds, okay? We'll be out for a while and we gotta clean things up after that. Tornado threat, as this comes by, these outer rain bands are gonna give us a tornado threat. This is Tuesday afternoon. You see those coming into the evening hours? They will all have a threat of a tornado. Watch this, Wednesday night, right over top of us. Let's hope this model's wrong. Let's hope it stays further offshore, but it's got to come way further offshore or else we're going to have some big issues. So that basically sends it right over top of it. Now, one trend is that perhaps we've got that southeast eye wall coming in down over Manatee and Sarasota County, which would be slightly better for the Tampa Bay area, but it would put more storm surge on those outer, uh, outer beaches there. So that's the issue that we're looking at right now. We're going to have to see if the shear that's on it, this blue, can help slow this thing down just a little bit. And we do think going from a cat four to a three to a two as it approaches Tampa. So we think the wind overall will be decreasing. Keep it right here on 10 Tampa Bay. We'll keep you updated with all of the updates. We expect another track, a full update coming up at 5 p.m. today.